Hey, hey, hey. welcome everybody to um, RevCon. I hope you're feeling good. Um, I hope everyone's feeling good about the sessions that we have so far. So right now we have John and Tara from HubSpot today with us. Um, and they're going to be chatting and um, talking about whatever questions or um, things that come up. So take it away, Tara and John. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, we are so excited to be here. Um, oh, geez. Yeah. I've already got my first technical issue here. Okay, hold on. Sorry. I'm here, everybody. We've had a couple of issues today. I'm just going to start out and just say we've had a couple of issues on the HubSpot side today. Uh, I would like to start by thanking my co-host today, Tara, for joining at the absolute last minute. Uh, originally, I've been planning to do this session uh, with Michelle Benfer. Uh, Michelle is uh, SVP of sales at HubSpot, uh, and I am a marketing leader at HubSpot, and Michelle and I have worked together for over five years. And as you saw in the description, that was the premise of this talk originally. Uh, Michelle's sick. She got very sick uh, when she was unavailable to join us today. And so Tara is a VP on the sales team at HubSpot, uh, and Tara and I have worked together for a little over a year and a half now. Uh, and so we don't quite have five years of experience together, but we do have some really solid time together. And I'll be honest, Tara is an incredible sales leader. Uh, she joined HubSpot and, and really elevated uh, how we think about selling. And she totally transformed our small business segment. So I'm really delighted that she was able to step in and join us. And so first of all, thank you, Tara. And second of all, I would just like to... Um, ask in advance as we go through this fireside chat uh, for a little empathy that Tara and I only had a few minutes to uh, prep and get aligned on these uh, topics uh, before we actually hopped on today. So um, if there's any awkwardness, uh, it's either just me because I'm a little bit awkward or it's because uh, we didn't have as much time to, to prep in advance. But thanks for being here, Tara. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. So Tara and I are Really excited to talk to you about a topic that we're deeply passionate about at HubSpot, and that is the topic of smarketing, uh, sales and marketing working together. Um, and if you've been close to HubSpot for any amount of time, you know that smarketing is kind of at the core of what we believe. We've believed for a long, long time that if sales teams and marketing teams work better together, then uh, they can grow better. Uh, but what's really interesting is that they're Number one, the, the relationship between sales and marketing that we see from our customers in the world is probably more fraught than it has been in a long time. Um, and there are some reasons for that uh, that we want to talk to you about today. And second of all, um, we feel generally like we are entering a period uh, where sales and marketing being incredibly tightly tied is going to be one of the absolute differences between companies that really struggle in this tough environment. Uh, ahead and companies that thrive. Um, and so we want to talk to you a little bit about what we've learned about some marketing over the last few years at HubSpot, why we think it's changing a bunch and uh, what the future kind of looks like. And um, you should feel free to jump into the Q&A uh, if you have questions you want us to, to jump in on. But that is what we are planning to talk about. Um, okay, so with the macro, Tara, we'll just kind of start there. It's kind of a tough time it's kind of a tough time uh, to be selling right now. It's definitely a tough time to be doing demand gen. Uh, we across the board with all of our customers are seeing ad costs are up. Organic is saturated. The playbooks that marketing has available are kind of a little bit limited right now uh, without partnering with sales on stuff. Uh, it feels like the macro is going to be pretty rough for a while. Um, any reflections? You know, you talk to, you know, your team talks to thousands of customers uh, every month. You know, what are you hearing from the front lines in terms of the the challenges customers are facing right now? Yeah, I think it's very consistent to what, what we may be feeling. I, a lot of the customers are, uh, you know, they're in the middle of budget costs and they're looking for ways to, you know, manage through the uncertainty. Um, they really are looking for a way to, you know, better connect uh, to their customer and, um, and they look and our customers are looking for better ways to do that. And it's, you know, it's interesting to engage in conversation and see that like, we're all kind of been rowing through this thing together, yeah. right. To get to the other side. Yeah. It, it is a little bit, um, 
you know, we had a very large event uh, about a month ago called Inbound. Um, maybe some people uh, who are, are attending today joined us for Inbound. If you did, thanks for coming, or maybe you watched it online. Um, it was a great session. It was very cathartic as a marketer to have the opportunity to um, talk to so many other marketers that week uh, because I felt like they, they felt my pain and I felt their pain. And we were like, oh, it's hard for you too. Like, it's really yeah. just, it's really hard right now. It's really tough. Um, That's right. You said, Tara, that like, you know, customers are kind of desperate for this um, rethinking how to connect with customers. Um, and that kind of makes me think about how sales and marketing need to work together a little bit. Do you mind maybe just like summarizing kind of in your view, like the the evolution of, you know, s you know, marketing, sales and marketing alignment, if you you know, jump back 10, 10, 15 years to the current day to what you think in the future will matter? Yeah. You know, I, as I reflect back on what was it like working with marketing over the last, to your point, 15, 20 years, yeah. you know, I would say that sales and marketing were not aligned. And I remember being in meetings and thinking like, is marketing listening? And I know marketing was sitting in, in meetings saying, does sales understand how to, how to progress what we're doing, right? There's that happening. And, and what I just know, shared there is we were in two different rooms, right? So we yeah. weren't aligned at all. Um, and then right now, I think what I'm, we definitely are doing here at HubSpot and what I'm seeing as I talk to more and more customers is that sales and marketing are starting to become more aligned with each other. But I think the future, as I think about what happens next is that sales and marketing as, as we're aligned, we're more focused on being aligned to the customer. Yeah. And I think that's where we're headed. Yeah, I, I really like that. I like that framing of it. I like thinking about like, oh, cool. It's not just about sales and marketing actually being aligned with each other. It's about sales and marketing being aligned with the customer. Um, it's a pretty motivating way to think about the go-to-market. It kind of, you know, one of the things that's always tough in a sales marketing relationship is kind of like, oh, who, like, what's the source of truth? Like, what's the right thing to do? Like, if I have the opportunity to run, you know, some automation that juices my goals uh but it's actually really bad for the reps like do i care is marketing mm -hmm. and if you look at it through the lens of a customer it kind of um kind of eliminates all that right it kind of just makes it super clear what the right thing to do is um and so it's, it's pretty motivating to think about it that way I agree. Uh, you know when we when we have talked in the past tara about our teams working together there are a couple of like um areas that we've focused on aligning our teams around. Um, and I took a stab at summarizing those. Um, you're welcome to uh, add a, a you know point of view on these if you would like, or add some if you, if you think we're missing any. But um, I think the first thing that you know we have obsessed about is aligning on goals. Uh, right. What is each team gold on? Feels like a second thing we've really obsessed about is aligning on our like systems strategy and having a unified system strategy. There's like a third thing that we've kind of obsessed about is like the the role that each team needs to play. Uh, a fourth is kind of aligning on engagement and how we want to engage customers as a combined unit. And the fifth is kind of aligning on what value we think we can offer to, to buyers. Do you think that does a, a good job summarizing? Anything you'd comment on or add there before we jump into those? I think it does, John. I think, it, I think about goals and systems. Um, I think the team's piece is so important. Yeah. Um, and then just make sure we're all going to the common goal of what does that engagement look like? So I think you've got a good subset of, of uh, what makes great marketing. Yeah. So let, let's break them down then. Let's start with goals. Um, all right. We talk sometimes in some marketing land about the concept of an SLA, service level agreement, a uh, concept that uh, was really pulled out of like systems originally and the idea of like, guaranteed uptime and stuff like that. Uh, what, give me your commentary on, on a marketing SLA. How important is it? Uh, how often when you're talking to customers, is that something that is, you know, in play, um, et cetera? Yeah. You know, John, I, mean, I think of SLA and, and to the point of where it originated, it's really that concept of like aligning on you know, a shared set of expectations that each team is responsible for. And so as talking to the customers, it's important. So um, when a lead does come in, what is the time that we're allowing that lead to 
potentially sit there. And we know today, right, customers have done 60% of their research before they're even, you know, coming to us and we're, we're being able to connect with them. Um, so I think the SLA is critical. And I think that at least some of the companies that I've had the opportunity to meet with, our SLA is, is long, longer than it really needs to be yeah. in the speed of the current and the now, right? And everything happening in the now, we can, we can uh, even decrease SLA as we continue to focus on the customer. Yeah, it was one of the first things when you joined the company and you and I started talking is you were like, we can act much faster as a sales team against these leads. And like, as a marketer, I was like, really? Okay, okay. awesome. That sounds great. I feel like I've been saying that for a long time, but uh, I didn't think it was possible. So uh, can you talk about like, how do, how do you change a sales team's culture around that? Like, how do you get people motivated to, you know, respond more quickly? How do you measure it? How do you think about all that? Any advice you'd give to the audience about how to pull off a transition like that? Yeah, I think like anything else, like first you got to announce the why behind wh why we're doing it and pulling in what's happening in the economy, whether it's a booming economy or we're entering a potential recession. So just being really clear with your team. I think it's also important to recognize that um, there's competitors entering the market every day, right? And then, and then I also think it's important to connect to your sales team and say, when you go looking for something, how many places do you go? Do you go to yeah. one site and that's where you, you land? And then showing them consistently week over week, the data yeah. and the success stories in where it really has power is when the customer says, I'm so glad you got to me when I did, I was looking at four other, other companies. Yeah. Th those are powerful case studies for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's really interesting. You know, on the marketing side of SLAs, I think we've had some lessons learned too, you know, um, I feel like when we first really got going with the marketing SLA at HubSpot, we measure our SLA actually in terms of like basically how much demand we commit to drive to each segment of our business. Um, and when I joined, it was definitely, uh, it was a volume metric and sales obsessed about getting volume of QLs. And unsurprisingly, that created some bad behavior. Like when I first joined and started actually looking at the numbers, like, we like, boy, we got pretty loose in our definition of a qualified lead when we were like stressing on getting volume, you know? Um, and, you know, we ended up transitioning it to a value-based metric instead of a volume-based metric. Um, it, it's been a little more confusing, I think, for sales leaders because they do work in terms of like, I like to look at my, my you know, volume and run it through. Um, but it has, I think, kept the alignment much stronger. The amount of noise I hear is much lower about, quality of leads that marketing's driving. Any, any commentary on that? <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. Yes, I would, I would say the commentary um, from the sales team that I get to work with every day, John, is they want more quality, right? There is, um, and it's funny, right? Because if you, you were looking at the SLAs and we're looking at uh, the demand and what's coming in and, and the minute you see something slightly lower, it's where's my, where's my volume? Yeah. Where's my volume? Um, but the truth is when we when we align on the value that's coming through in these QL leads, we're seeing higher close ratios, we're seeing better conversations, and we're seeing our customers um, engage with, if I'm speaking just of HubSpot, engage with HubSpot with multiple hubs yeah. and, and really understanding uh, the value of, of HubSpot. So I think as, as we explore or continue to uh, evolve, uh, I think there's a place for both, like volume and value. Yeah. Yeah. I do think you have to keep some volume guardrail for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but all right. Well, let's talk about uh, let's talk about systems a little bit. Hot topic. Uh, you mentioned cost cutting at the start of this. And, you know, everyone is trying to figure out how to consolidate, rethink their stack. Um, you know, my my sense is that one of the biggest breakthroughs we had as a combined HubSpot sales and marketing organization was when we switched from having um, a different marketing system, which we were using HubSpot and a sales system, we were using Salesforce, switched to one unified CRM platform, which was HubSpot, HubSpot for marketing, HubSpot for sales, um, same unified CRM database, same contact record. Um, you've worked at a lot of shops over the last few years. Can you talk about like the role, like wh what it was like coming and in, in being at, at a unified shop versus kind of a fragmented shop? Oh, I mean, 
you know, get me started, right? Uh, but being I want to get you started. I want to get you started. Let's go. I mean, it was difficult, right? You had you had friction with your employees. You had friction with, or we had friction with employees. We had friction with uh, customers. We had friction with different departments because what marketing was seeing was not what sales was seeing. What sales was seeing was not what service was seeing. Um, our response time to our customers was not uh, what it needed to be. And, and we were just fragmented, right? Yeah. And, and there was frustration constantly. And so to find HubSpot, um, to actually have the opportunity to pilot HubSpot with one of the companies I was with, um, and then to be able to come and use HubSpot where everything is talking to everything else on behalf of the customer, uh, it's been an incredible experience for us and, and the customers that we get to work with. Yeah. And one thing that I'm always interested in people's perspective on is like, it's unrealistic to say you're going to run your entire business on a single piece of software, right? Like there's still plenty of things that you like, you know, an all in one is not going to be able to provide for you. Like, how do you, how do you think about that? Is that okay? Do you think in the future, like how should sales and marketing teams be thinking about it? You know, I do think it's okay. I think you've got it. We've got to have, you know, we talked a little bit about the connected systems, right? And I think as long yeah. as we can create that for our customers and that it's an easy flow back and forth, I, I think, you know, that's having apps and every business is unique. If at their core, things can be unified, I think that puts a business in, in a good spot today and tomorrow. Yeah, I definitely, I, I agree with you. I mean, my sense is kind of like, I want my sales team, my marketing team and my CS team kind of, um, using the same system of record. I want them using the same system of engagement. I think when you do that, it is pretty transformative the ability, like you said, to um, not be fragmented in terms of view of the customer, of outreach, of all these things, you know. Um, uh, but beyond that, actually like pretty flexible about like what else we integrate into the stack, um, you know, but I do think having that kind of system of record, system of um, engagement kind of unified across sales and marketing teams and CS ideally um, is, is pretty powerful. I agree. We we talked about teams, Tara, uh, a little bit, but um, there's been, been some like big evolutions, I think, of kind of how to think about, you know, sales versus marketing, how they work together, um, you know feels like we were in this world before where kind of sales used to do demand gen with, you know, some marketing support. So it just it was mainly human. And then actually feel, it feels like marketing and sales kind of have gone over the last couple of years and each done their own play to drive demand. It feels like the sales teams have said, Hey, we're going to run a human based demand gen strategy and we're going to automate a bunch of it. And marketing has said, we're going to do a digital demand gen strategy and automate a bunch of it. What do you, where do you, you know, uh, feels like that's on a path to not be the most successful. How should we kind of think about the convergence of that over time and, and how to evolve that? Yeah, I, we talked about it a little earlier, but I think it's, it truly is the partnering on the demand gen. And, and I would even reach out and say, you know, bring Mark uh, into the demand gen, like connecting with product and product um, being involved. Right. And, and even if we're going to think about aligning as our customer, uh, right, that product is is a, is a main driver as as we go to market together. And uh, the, you know, in, in my opinion, and, and based on what I've seen, is that uh, the more we're together, the more we do reach the customer. Right? They yeah. don't they want to feel that we are connected. And you know, I, I often has made the comment of you know, sales sales teams are ambassador are ambassadors of the marketing message. And when that customer hears that marketing message, they want to hear that marketing message or that message that grabbed them. They want to hear that when they get on the phone with anyone, yeah. the company that they're calling into, especially sales. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's interesting because as a marketer, you know, I feel a bit of like, you know, we kind of like, we used to try and we used to try and go to market together a little bit, but it was a little broken, but like, as a marketer, like I just kind of had like a pretty extraordinary period where there was just a ton of upside, right? Like I think, you know, as social and search became so um, available and uh, offered so much audience at such a low cost, it was pretty easy for me to like kind of bail on sales. And so kind of one of my reflections a little bit is I feel like, you know, I kind of 
as a marketer was like, well, it is a higher ROI for me to go as hard as I can at search, at social, at paid and to do all those things. And like, that's just going to be higher ROI. And now that that is all kind of becoming somewhat constrained, like we're kind of coming back together and we're like, okay, well, actually it seems like we kind of got to rethink some of that and we got to, got to work together. That's right. Uh, okay. We've talked about automation a bit. This was kind of, uh, you know, how we choose to engage with customers, rules of engagement, how to think about what to prioritize, what the North Star should be for how to engage. Uh, this area I have a lot of passion around. We have a lot of passion around at HubSpot. Um, feels like in, like in the past past, it used to be mostly about like async, you know, engagement and mostly through email, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the phone, of course, um, you know. But yeah. that's changed, right? Like, can you, let's talk about like, okay, so in the last few years, like real time has exploded, chat has exploded, uh, you know, tell it, yeah, what, do you, what are you observing uh, around that? And, and what would you recommend for people to think about? Yeah, I, I shared a little of this just a few minutes ago, I think, but when we talk about um, chat, it's, it's that like instant gratification right, that customers are looking for and they want a response now. And, I, you know, I think there's a blend here. Um, there's a blend in um, what I think about as, as and, and we have referenced this, this all bound, where we wanna, we wanna lean into active acquisition and alignment with our marketing team, yeah. right, to include partners. Um, at the same time, we wanna be really responsive to the customers that are coming through us through uh, you know, the chat box, uh, so on and so forth. And on and all of the right omni channels that they're coming through. And I think as we continue to streamline that omni channel connection to the individual that can take the customer the rest of the way, um, we're going to, we're going to see some powerful, uh, growth in, in customer engagement, just yeah. us or any customer and in, in their product. Yeah. I kind of feel like the evolution was like async communication through email. And then it kind of went to like, more real-time communication uh, through email and chat. And the goal shifted kind of from like, okay, well, the goal is just to drive engagement to being a goal around booking a meeting. And now it feels like it's going to evolve even further. Like, uh, how, do you know what percentage of your reps are using SMS to communicate with buyers? Does that happen often? Uh, it's happening. I would say it's getting more and more. Yeah. So all of a sudden you're like, okay, email, chat, SMS, you know, WhatsApp if you're in LATAM or, or maybe Europe. Yeah. Uh, and it feels like increasingly the goal is not just even booking meetings. The goal is actually like, why don't you just go ahead and purchase? Uh, I'll just guide you along and you're going to make a purchase here. Pretty, That's pretty right. interesting evolution um, for sure. Does that change how you like coach your reps in terms of how to think about some of this stuff? You know, I... I think we're all still learning through it, John, and and I think it does change the way, right? You'll hear a lot of the conversations that uh, we're engaging in today is is that I keep saying this, but it it is the speed, right? Yeah. Of, in which you're connecting to the customer and giving the customer the information that they need the way that they need it. Um, one of the things that we've been really talking about is listening, whether it's listening by reading or it's listening uh, to the customer once you get them live on the phone. Um, to give them what they're looking for. It's like I said, customers are doing 60%, 70% of the research before they get to us. They're pretty clear on what they're looking for. We've got to reframe and take them uh, the rest of the way. Um, but our reps need to be quick and responsive. I think right now it's important to be very responsive. Yeah. I, I like earlier when you talked about this notion of like uh, challenging your reps to think about how they like to buy things. It's like a favorite exercise of mine is to just think about like, well, what are the great experiences I see in the world? And then like, why can't I pull that off in B2B, right? Like for whatever reason, I, it always pisses me off. I'm like, for some reason in B2B, we think it has to be like so lame and so boring because I know. someone must fill out the lead gen forms that I get yeah. my QL credit so that, you know, my SLA is, is complete, you know? And it's like, ah, meanwhile, you know, I'm purchasing things through chat all over That's the internet. Right. And so, yeah, we're definitely trying to go that way. I think the more that team, you know, sales and marketing teams can be aligned on that and not let like whatever internal processes or internal structures or old ways of thinking get in the way of adopting that stuff. I think, I think the more successful companies will be. Oh, geez. I couldn't agree more, John. I couldn't agree more. Can, you know, 
the last thing that sales and marketing kind of have to align on is like, what is like the unit of value that can be offered in a, you know, in a sales process. And I feel like if you go way, way back, it was like free consultation from with a rep, right? Like that's what you used to get in the, yeah. in the way back. And then it was like marketing got into free content and all of a sudden everyone's offering free content. That was the heart of inbound. Um, and then it became actually for a lot of companies, particularly in software, it became free software and offering free software, not just a trial, but actual high value um, free software as a way to drive engagement and value. Um, HubSpot is, done a lot with freemium your team sells a lot to free users of our software what if you could share some insights for the audience just about the role that our freemium product has ended up playing in the sales process how do you think about it how do you you know everything everything yeah. what, what would you advise people on yeah I, I think freemium has really worked for us and i think that there's a couple reasons why um, one is that um when you think about it, it's giving net new customers, customers that are thinking about us, but may not have the investment right now to make, it's giving them the opportunity to, to try, right? To be part of the solution that we have and to see how it works with their business before they're even making that investment. And I think what that's doing is it's making it, I don't want to use the word upsell, but I will, uh, right? But it gives us the opportunity to create that relationship with them where we can engage with them and say, this this freemium has gotten you this far. Um, how has the experience been? It's been a great experience. Okay, let us show you how far, how much further we can take you. Yeah. And we can help your business grow. And it, it's opened up those conversations that would traditionally be really cold conversations to be really warm and helpful conversations uh, for the customer. And then the other thing is, you know, because um, some of our customers will take different hubs and at, um, at freemium rate is it allows them to try different the different hubs too to see things all come together. Yeah. And that allows them to then go tell their friends about it, right? And 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 that is us, I truly see as connecting to the community. Yeah. And when they're ready, we're going to be there for them. And we're going to help them grow and we'll, we'll help them emerge more and more into the CRM. Yeah, that's, um, that's really interesting to hear. How do you, Tara, think about getting the incentives right for a sales team? Like... On the one hand, like in our free product, you can just purchase HubSpot, right? Like you don't have to talk to a sales rep. You can just buy yep. with a credit card. Right. Um, how is that not competitive to your sales team? How do you get them excited about it? Well, I referenced it slightly, but we know the uh, you mentioned the evolution of sales and where it used to be that phone call or that knocking on the door or the, um, you know, the cold environment. And so... Um, we continue to talk to our reps about that warm introduction to, to this customer. And, and we continue to really be focused on helping the customer. Like every conversation is about go see what they're using. Does the, the customer has gotten themselves thus far. They are passionate and they know their product or their solution or their service. Do they really know how much the CRM or this different hub can help them connect better with their customers and and our reps are very mission focused and so that there's a mission in that right of going to help those customers and and we connect them to it that's cool thanks for sharing that um yeah. well listen we're we're pretty much out of time here uh we're coming up to 245 uh eastern so tara i just want to thank you again for uh joining us at the last minute and sharing those insights i hope the audience found them valuable and uh i wish everybody the best uh in the Tough, tougher growth period ahead for all of us. Um, thanks so much. Thank you all.